the weekly feed, Kyle Meredith and Alec Owensworth from Clap Your Hands Say Yeah. Welcome back. Hello. Yeah, thanks for having me again. You're one of the, uh, the few re repeat performers that we get to have on here. <laughs> Good. The rest of them just walk away. <laughs> so Never yeah. again. Goodbye forever. Yeah. Uh, there's some fun stuff going on today. So we're at Zanzibar and the always great pinball machines they have here, uh, yeah. here in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, you're late today because you, you, uh, you popped your tire. I did. Yeah. And I you're did. driving, right? I was driving. Yeah, that's my fault. I don't think you I can see the over, screw on the road. Ran over a screw. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was it was in the distance. Maybe I aimed for it. <laughs> it's. I only bring this up actually because it's like this far into your career, and this goes again. Everybody brings up the independence. You are an independent artist to mm -hmm. a really hard D. Uh, and, and so these are the things you still have to deal with. It's not the big tour bus. I mean, you're still you know, you're still taking it. You know, no label, right? Yeah. This is no all on label, your own. Um, label in Europe, no label in the States. Yeah. I work with a distribution company sure. in the States. That's the same way it's been for the last, for all, all the records yeah. with a distribution company. But yeah, I mean, as far as the tour bus thing, I mean, even when we were doing a tour bus, I said in the States, I'd rather not. So we were using the same van, yeah. um, even when we were at quote unquote tour bus level. Because I didn't think that I really got to see my, much of the country if I. So that's important to you. Oh yeah, of course. Actually, yeah. actually seeing it because I'd figure after so long, you're just like any little town. Yeah, I mean, it's I don't know Starbucks. if you were going to ask about this, but the living it's one of the reasons I I do shows at people's mm -hmm. houses. Mm -hmm. If I can see people and it feels like something to me, it'll keep me going. Yeah. A little bit more than just like you know popping up and just going through the motions mm -hmm. on stage. No, we're definitely going to talk about that. I mean, th I think everyone. Um, uh, is, is really kind of in awe that you've done this because the interview shows they happen I mean people do this this isn't like you know your original idea you know artists do this but I don't think they do it at your level I think that's what surprised everybody right. usually this is like David Bazan you know it's fantastic sure yeah. but, but it's kind of you know that uh, underground cult level I know you you know to a point have got your cult audience too but I uh, think I'm becoming uh, more cultish more cultish <laughs> Thanks to the new I'll album, get, Holy Run. There. Yeah, I'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, so what yeah, was I'll it? Shut I mean, it all. You, could, you could have done another big tour, but you said, I'm going to go out on my own and I'm just going to, you know, come into your living room. I mean, 25, yeah. 30 people, right? Yeah. That show. Uh, well, a um, uh, maximum of 50. Yeah. Show. Yeah. So, uh, big difference. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Um, so, but that, that's the limit. And, and the reason we do that is because it's supposed to be that intimate back yeah. and forth. Um, the reason I did it was because I like to meet the people who listen to my music. Yeah. I mean, I am, uh, I, I joke about becoming more cultish by the day or whatever it might, you know, whatever you might say, but I think uh, <clears throat> I prefer that, that intimate back and forth with people, the personal touch, mm -hmm. and I don't believe that con connecting with the masses has ever really been my style. Yeah. So. I mean, from the, from day one, from the first record, that's the way it was, yeah. and that's why maybe, you know, I'm you know I'm getting what I wish for. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I find your music so interesting. I mean, it's really not like a lot. Of, you know, the, I, I, there's no one I can compare you to anyway, yeah. and to have that kind of one on one in a house, it, it almost seems. I mean, do you have to do you have to work on different styles when you're playing in a living room? Oh yeah, I have to rearrange most everything. Yeah. I mean, some of the songs are a little easier because, for example, songs like "Upon This Tidal Wave of Young Blood," or uh, yeah, some of the stuff from the first record began with guitar, mm. and then I'd add things as I went along. But it began with that shape in the beginning, and some of the mm. others, like uh, well, Satan said, "Dance." I don't play in living rooms, but. Uh, some of the others, you know, I, I built based on a keyboard line right, or, or right. a bass line or something like that, you know. So, but so, yeah, some of them I really have to kind of like break down and build up again. That's what I was thinking with this new record, um, that it would be have to be almost completely different when you were playing it. I mean, are you doing an acoustic? Is that what it is? In, um, the, the, in the living rooms, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all, yeah. Absolutely. And it's like it's you can do this record challenge. again. You can do a different version of this record as that. Oh yeah, as only I have. I've I've practiced it, yeah. and I I have done a different version of it of all the records. But I think that's a great challenge. I think it's a lot easier to uh, to stack parts on an album than to make something really convincing by mm -hmm. yourself on guitar. You know. Mm -hmm. So. 
Yeah, that that go out to all the reviewers who keep calling your uh, your album synthy and everything. It's like, well, here's the other version. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> whatever. They'll come around eventually. <laughs> they will. Or not. We we, not we were talking off camera for it. You'll be like '80s Dylan. <laughs> yeah. Right. Eventually, that's that's what everybody will talk about. Yeah. I mean, I hear people sometimes people bring up some loud thunder now. I'm yeah. Like, oh, it's a great record. Like, well. Which was the one everyone slammed seven years ago. Might yeah. Have helped if you picked up on that, it's but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Better late than never. I yeah, guess. I know you've talked a lot recently too about trying to figure out the industry at this point. Like, I, I think I guess all of these moves are like what's going to work and what's not, mm. which is fun, I guess, because I feel like that's something and that artists all around have been saying for the last fifteen years. Like, yeah. it's like, well, the industry is different, so we got to figure out what works and what doesn't. Yeah, it's like 15 we're fifteen years, years in, we're fifteen years past Napster at this point. I know. I like, know. I'm not really sure there's an answer to this anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. I think you have to do what's right for you. For me, it's being independent, yeah. and for me, it is making house calls and it's yeah. it's getting in touch with people, you know, directly, like literally knocking on their doors and 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 meeting them. You're a politician. Um, yeah, apparently. <laughs> I used to think that in the in the worst of times in the past that 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 was what I was trying to do. I mean, or that's what people took me for as some sort of politician, and I'm supposed to analyze uh, certain demographics and try to pinpoint why they like x y and z and i just yeah you know, i don't i don't have an interest in that game uh you know I, what we call that country music country music. <laughs> right. that is the national yeah, exactly. sound <laughs> i think that for me though that what you know the personal touch and really knowing everybody yeah. i mean i've said this before um i don't i don't care to to bring you know 10,000 people mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. to a a venue or anything like that. If I can communicate with, um, you know, five to ten thousand people around the world, and you know mm -hmm. they happen to be bold enough to go out and buy my record, right. then I, you know, if I do everything independently, I can keep making the record that I want to make. If it's only for those people, so be it. So what happens if it just lightning strikes them? Suddenly, I'll have to be careful. I mean, because like the first record, I think that that's essentially what happened. And I remember going out to some of these big shows and thinking, well, I mean, we can we can do this, we can pull this off, but this seems it seems uh, somewhat impersonal. It's mm. not that I'll shy away from a bigger show, but um, <clears throat> I prefer that balance. I prefer to be able to just talk to people, and yeah. they won't just you know lose it because I happen to be on stage in front of a lot of people from time to time. You know. There's, a, there's an interesting debate that goes along with accessibility towards artists and everything, and y you're you're kind of this weird island in this argument, because <laughs> if you go back in the '70s, the great thing about uh, the way myths were made was because we we, we didn't have the access, you right. know, and, yeah. and so you, you I didn't love, live in the '70s, but obviously, no, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, but but you had that. Uh, nowadays, you know, uh, I don't know, Justin Timberlake can tweet back to you. Um, right. You're not as heavy-handed on the uh, the web side of things. Like I think that's the illusion of closeness. I mean, there's. Yeah. Uh, I I prefer to have an actual conversation. Right. Uh, right. If I can, obviously, that's a way to to theoretically talk to more people or ostensibly talk to more people. Um, <clears throat> but I I think it it is finally an illusion. Mm. I think at the very best, what what can be done with that is to sort of like keep people. Um, up on what you're doing but as far as like absolute like true communication I don't know even email seems to me like a, a distant you know abstract <laughs> personal way of going about talking to someone I think it's pretty well embedded in society by this point though it I is think, yeah. but I mean for me I just like, you still yeah, have your AOL screen give me a call on the phone. <laughs> I don't know yeah well, let's let's head over to Only Run because this is this really fantastic record. Thank uh, you. I, I am in love with it. I, I would call it your best. Uh, this is my favorite. Clap your hands, say yeah, record. I think probably is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope so. But because every artist says that. Yeah, right, right, right. No, actually, <laughs> it's I, okay. I just put it out. Well, no, no, I wouldn't have said that necessarily. Well, maybe I would have mm. under duress about the last one. Um, yeah. The last I thought had a lot. Uh, well, a lot of good songs, but I don't think I would have called it the best record at okay. that time. You know. This one is, though, um, it seems like there was a bit of, I don't know if turmoil is the right word. You lost band members, yeah. so band members went away. Uh -huh. You took the time in between. You did, you did the, uh, the living room tour and everything. Right. Did, was there that moment between the last records and, and this one where you had to say, what do I want to do? 
Not really. Or was it more natural? Because, because I, did. I, I still hear you in these songs, it's a, but it does sound like a different record. You know? Yeah, maybe, but it's really not that different the way I went about putting this record together. As, yeah. as like the songwriting other. and everything was still the same with you. Yeah, yeah, I would do it as far as I could get by myself and then bring people in as needed. You yeah, know? yeah. And that's the way that it began. And uh, second record, same thing. Mm. Third record was a little bit more of me trying to get everybody, you know, in on it. Yeah. Uh, which so finally, I'm you just very, throw your hands up in the air and it's like. <laughs> I did, I did. I sat back and I said, "Well, I guess let's see what if everybody likes it." You yeah, know. yeah. But uh, I don't think I don't think that worked really too well. Um, so I sort of, you know, put my foot down and did it the way it was when it started. Yeah, you know? yeah. And um, you know, and I, I think that for for me or for this project that's just that happens to be the way it works sure. um you are on nine inch nails <laughs> well i mean not to <laughs> definitely not i think that those guys did a great job yeah um and i do think that like even if i would would show uh like a, a part in its entirety i think that you know they would they would take it and make it their own right, finally right. um but uh but yeah like this you know the record I made in New Orleans or like mm -hmm. the uh, flashy Python record I made it was it's not I haven't worked very differently on any yeah. of these so is there any reason to do because you put out the uh, the Alec Bonesworth record the one thing is there any reason to do that again from now on out is it just I think the only time I'll do you call have to it separate I, yeah. I'm not really sure why I called it Alec Bonesworth at all yeah. I think I was just kind of tired of picking names sure. you know, at that point. <laughs> it's just I think me. the only reason I'll the only way I'll do another Alec Bonesworth record is if it's just me on acoustic guitar oh, I'm thinking okay. about doing that sort of thing gotcha. that's I'll gotcha. just keep it there so it's, you know as I get fur farther and farther into this I'm getting a little bit more confused as to which one is supposed to <laughs> who be is which who? you know <laughs> I mean, that's the Mo Beauty record. I had mm -hmm. practiced a lot of those songs with the guys in Clap Your Hands, but they just, I didn't think they worked. So, yeah. and vice versa. Well, them. you're coming up, uh, I guess, the 10th anniversary, right? Yeah, for the first, yeah. Yeah. Anything planned with that? Uh, I don't know. I guess we should re-release -re it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what people do. You, you go out and you do the tour, you play it front to back. And, right. uh, oh, yeah, I don't know you, about uh, that. Um, you revisit every blog thing that happened around that time it would be a lot of fun actually maybe maybe to play <laughs> front to back maybe just for a few shows um th these guys are great this the, the new group of guys i have yeah and it's uh yeah you know yet another I interesting take on it and I, I think if it were played exactly the way it was in the record you know obviously it wasn't played the way it was in the record right after the record was right, made right. so i mean yeah so I, I think it would be interesting yeah to, to re-release. I think I'm trying to dig up, you know, I have hundreds and hundreds of tapes and um, files on my computer. I have all these files of like old recordings and half finished demos and, you know, completely finished variations mm -hmm. of all of these songs. You, you write songs, uh, you record songs in different ways, right? Oh yeah. Like there's many different versions of every song. Sure, I mean, if people wanted to hear a rock, you know, this to be guitar rock, this last record, I could probably dig up those right. versions. If I actually had that in mind, then it would have it made sense. You know, with the web though, I mean, that's, that's really easy to do, especially when you're not tied to a label or anything. You could do that, you know? It's oh like, yeah. Here's yeah. this version of the record. Here's this version of the record. Right, yeah, yeah. I could do that, but I don't, you know, I think this is the way I wanted it to sound. Right. So I don't go out of my way to dig stuff up right. unless I really need to. Is there any embarrassment at this point when you look at your back catalog? Because once yeah. again, 10 years, a lot happens in 10 years for your personality. Yeah, you yeah, know? no, not at all. I think I, I like those songs still mean a lot to me mm -hmm. and they still fit with everything else. I mean, this new, the new um, live, sh the live show now, fitting in that new material with the first, second, and third record, it's just kind of seamless. Mm -hmm. It just yeah. blends together. Well, I can't wait till the 10th anniversary of your second record where you can really do the big finger <laughs> in the air to everybody. That would be great. I, I'd be excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> Alec, dude, it's been great catching up yeah, with you again, man. Nice to talk to Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we'll see you on the, uh, the third time around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. I'll be here. <laughs>